Cooper with Totes and Notes. It's currently August 29th, and I'm uh, making this week's Note Nugget, and we're going to be covering, covering uh, Movavi Video Editor. This is the video editor that I use for virtually all of our videos, and this is how it's spelled, M-O-V-A-V-I. You can get a free trial of it, and it has quite a few features on it in the free trial. Um, I can't remember if there's a watermark or not, but it's, I think it was 20 bucks. I mean, it's a one-time fee of 20 bucks, not a subscription, one-time fee of like 20 to 30 bucks. Very affordable, very easy to use, um, but still there, there's a lot to it to where if you want to edit a lot of stuff and put in some bells and whistles, you can. So let's get started when you open up. This is the screen you'll see. You can create a, a project in full feature mode, which is what I always do. There's the easy mode over here. I've never used this. I have no idea what it is. The full feature mode's easy enough and I wanna have all the features. And let's say you had a project you're already recording or working on, then you could just do open project here. But we'll do a full feature. And so what we're gonna work on is the um, this week's market meltdown that I just got done recording. So, all right, so, you get, so there are lots of things here. So up here is import, filters, transitions, titles, stickers, and then more. So we're gonna add media first. And then right here, you've got my files, sound, music, sample video and stuff. So like, it comes with some sounds and some music and then you can buy more for fairly cheap, which I have done, and some backgrounds and things like that. But we're just gonna start with uh, my files. So what I like to do is I've got some pre-made intros and outros that I can add at any time. Um, depending if you're going to do a bunch of editing, cutting, and stuff like that, you may want to wait till the end to add them in. Um, but this is going to be real easy for me. I'm going to cut and delete the dead spots so I can go ahead and add stuff in. But like let's say you recorded something and you're like, oh, this part would be better in front when you recorded it like way down the road. Then it may be better to not add a bunch of extra stuff in until you're done. That way you don't get confused. You can also label things to help you um, stay organized. But we'll go ahead and do this. Here we go, I think this is the one. Yep, that should be it. And you see right now, I've got 12 minutes here and we're kind of zoomed out. So this part segment looks really small. So you go down here, this is the scale. And so we're zooming in. So we're still at the 12 minute mark, but now you can actually see this as opposed to just seeing a little sliver. Just click and drag. So this is my uh, intro I've been using on most of the stuff lately. All right, and we'll zoom in a little bit more for so you can see this is the video part and this is the audio. So you can see the audio levels. And then right here you can see there's this all this dead space where I haven't started yet. So what you do is you select, you want to like, so right now this isn't selected, just the audio is. We want to select this and then we can go close to it We'll use these scissor keys here. We're just gonna cut that out. So there's still about a one second delay there. We'll get rid of some of that, cut it. Right now, if I hit delete, it's gonna delete both. Since you see that stuff's highlighted, we just wanna select that, delete that. I don't know if you guys will be able to hear the audio like I'm hearing it right now when I'm playing the video. Uh, I sure hope so, but right now I'm just listening real quick. Another key thing is, is when you go to record in OBS like I do, you'll want to record just some test samples and mess with the microphone gain to make sure you're getting a good volume. If you have the gain up too high, then it's going to record all kinds of stuff and it'll sound really staticky. Um, and if you have it too low, then you're just going to have to shout at it like crazy. And the other thing is, is you want to have your microphone, um, the closer to your mouth, the better. And so you can't see it, but all right, so... If, you know, I'm pointing at myself here, my microphone would be right here, just barely off screen. So probably about six to nine inches away from my mouth. So it's pretty close. Um, I, I like to have it a little bit further away so it's not in the screen, but I have had times where it just, for whatever reason, was not picking up well. So you have to have it right next to your mouth. So it looks like there's some dead spot right up here. So we'll go ahead and go up here. So yeah, you want to look at these spots here. So like when I was recording right here was a little bit of a dead spot because I was thinking while I was recording. So if it's a really big one, you can go and kind of delete it and it'll still be seamless. So we'll go ahead, we'll just cut this out just a little bit and see if that makes it a little bit smoother. Then here, huge dead spot here because I'm transitioning to a new article. 
And what I used to do is I used to stop recording when I do that, but that's actually harder because then there are more files to go in and bring uh, in and you're just creating a lot, uh, you're creating a bigger thing for you to have to deal with as far as keeping it organized because you have so many different files. I find it's easier just to keep it as one file and then go back and cut out all the dead zones, make it really obvious. Um, if I end up coughing or sneezing or just sounding like an, you know a complete and utter idiot, then what I'll do is I'll just stop, I'll have a big pause there, then I'll wave at the camera and start recording again because then I have an audio and visual, visual cue of where I need to go cut, cut stuff out uh, later, and so that's a little bit easier. So we'll cut this big dead spot out, go back and listen to it, make sure it's good. So as you, so as you can see here, pretty steady so I know I'm probably good there and what I usually do is when I'm done cutting I, I go listen to everything again just to make sure it's not jacked up and I'll read articles or be doing something else while I listen to it so we can fast forward up to here big dead spot for the next article so cut there cut here Let's just select that and delete it. Let's see how it sounds. So I don't know if you could listen to it, but I kind of stumbled here and so I left this dead spot so I could cut this part out. The bigger dead spot you leave there, the easier it'll be for you to find it. And then it's a lot easier for you to go in and cut and just shave off little seconds here and there. So it's you can make it more seamless. If you make it a really, really quick dead spot and then start talking again, it's a lot harder to do that. Okay, go up here, it looks like the audio's dead. Yep, stop there. And whenever you need to do some fine detail stuff, so you scale in, but you don't wanna stay here too long because then you're having to scroll through forever to get just to move like 30 seconds. So what you do is you come in here, you put your spot, and then you zoom back out a little bit. Okay, that was pretty good. So we can see this spot here. We'll zoom in. Cut. See how far I'm having to drag since I'm so zoomed in. Cut that. And we'll zoom back out a little bit. Okay, so we'll fast forward to there. Cut here, get rid of this dead spot, go back, listen to the transition, zoom in a little bit. That's one of these things, this is nice to look at because I have the tendency to trail off and lower the volume of my voice when I get towards the end of what I'm talking about, especially when I'm kind of doing this stuff live and not making a pre-planned video. So that's, that's, a, that's a tendency most people have and you want to listen to it. Um, I also have the tendency to do that when I'm on the radio at work talking to aircraft. It's, it's a very common tendency for people that are speaking and you want to remain clear and try to keep the volume up when you're done. So make it a clear, concise ending and uh, try not to trail off. I'm sure you'll do it. It's a very common tendency. Just, um, it's just something to think about. I guess it's one of those things too. I can use it as a cue. If I'm not paying attention, I'm just listening. Then I hear myself trail off. I can usually say, oh, well, I'm probably about to end uh, an article or a thought or whatever. All right, let's listen to this transition now. Okay, so it looks like I'm going to end about here. Let's zoom in a little bit more. Another cool thing is, is um, you probably won't do this on audio too, too much unless... Um, it, you leave a really short pause and I've had to do this in the past more likely what I use this for is when there's a video transition so you've got the play button here and then these go to previous frame or go to next frame so you can go frame by frame you don't want to have to use this but it is great for when you need it 
Um, so a lot of times I'll do that when I'm trying to seamlessly put together the visuals on stuff. So that, that's very helpful for that. All right, zoom out so we can scroll over quickly. See, that would have been huge if we hadn't zoomed out. Zoom back in, make sure we're good. Yeah, that's pretty close. Zoom back out. Okay. All right, so this was the last part of the video. So we'll zoom in here so we don't have a bunch of dead space at the end. Now here's the deal, you can have like little bits of dead space, you don't need to shave off every little bit, but the more you shave off, generally the easier it's gonna be because the larger the video gets, the longer it takes to convert, the longer it takes to upload, and then you gotta think about this, if you're gonna put this on a bunch of different websites and social media, some of those have restrictions. Um, what, Twitter's like two and a half minutes, LinkedIn's 10 minutes, and uh, I think Instagram's like 60 seconds. So the more you can shave off, the more you can have on there. But it's not terrible. I mean, obviously, people on Instagram are going to realize most of your videos aren't going to be just a minute long. So that's why you just put the link into like YouTube or wherever else you're going to have the full video. But I try, if I can keep my videos down to 10 minutes or less, it's nice because then I can upload the whole thing to LinkedIn. All right. So cut there. All right. So now that we've got that stuff done, I like to zoom out. Oh, that's a little too much. Um, so then I can see everything and quickly go from one side to the next. So we need to put in our outro. So we go back to add media files. Let's see here. Text intro. Yeah, that's my outro. So here's cool stuff that we can do. I've already done this because I've used these a bunch, but uh, let's say, like I generally don't want to start my videos with too loud a music because it can really shock people. It's really jarring if you don't know what volume the video is going to be and you turn it up and then it just blasts you. And then a lot of times the, the recording of my voice will be on the lower end. So I'll want that at 100% or higher. So but if people crank up their volume and then we get to the end and I've got really loud music, then you're going to blow out their eardrums. So what you do here to adjust that, double click on the clip and then you have volume here and speed. So you can actually make the, uh, the piece of video or audio faster or slower and decrease or increase the volume. So we'll decrease the volume a little bit. And then the other cool thing is, you can do fade in or fade out. So I really like doing this too because that's another way you can prepare people. If their audio is way too high, then you're not giving them the full blast initially. It's a one second, one second to uptick to it. And then I like having a fade out too. So we'll listen to that. And I like the fade out, it's, it's very smooth. We'll do that at the end over here. So we'll double click this. Yeah, volume's not too bad. We'll, uh, but we will do a fade in of one second and a fade out of two. Now this is a little bit longer. Okay, so we'll fast forward, just go to the end. See, it's got that nice drop off there. And there are some other cool things you can do, but the, the main thing is, is you double click on what you want to edit and it brings up all kinds of stuff. Color adjustments, crop and rotate, pan and zoom, stabilization, highlight and conceal, chroma key. I don't have to do the chroma key on this one since I already did that through OBS. But um, if you've seen any of my investor videos that I made recently or some of my other videos, I do do chroma key. Like, especially if it's a PowerPoint, I'll do that and some other things. Or I'll uh, put in a background. You can highlight and conceal. Uh, there, I mean, I've just now started messing with some of this stuff. I did the highlight and conceal on a video that I haven't uploaded yet because I was um, showing my address and I didn't want that blasted out to the world. So I was able to go in and basically look like you know cops where they're where they're putting um, 
hide, or concealing someone's face, making it all digitized and pixelated. Now there's something that's kind of cool, and you can see it here in this intro. So right now you see this is some background footage that I downloaded from, I believe, Video Blocks. And this was a green screen here on the monitor. So I was able to put my intro that I have been using on top of it to make this new intro. And then you see it zooms in here. That's not what the original video does. The original video is this the whole time. It's just this guy messing with the mouse and a blank screen with a green screen on it. And so what I did when I made this is I did the pan and zoom. And so what you do is you click on wh whatever you want to do, whether it's pan, zoom in, or zoom out, and you hit add. And then it so lets you select the area that you want to focus on. Make it bigger or smaller, however you want. And then you can do, uh, all right, we need to zoom in. So this arrow here indicates where it starts and how long it is, and you can adjust that. Oops. Make it longer, you know, like really slow down and zoom in. So it's a cool feature, uh, very intuitive. Don't be afraid to try this stuff out. There, I took it out. Um, you can do some other resizing and things like that. I hardly ever mess with these icons. Now there is some cool stuff with the with the more where it just pulls up some of the things that were already in. So like we double click here and then it brings up this stuff here or you could just click over here to get the same options. Um, let's see, okay, we'll try text. So if you've seen a lot of my videos, I'll have this or I'll, I use this one a ton. And so what you do, this gives you a preview here. And like, let's say we wanted to add that in. We put it, you know, select, you know, drag it to where you want it. And then this part here indicates how long it'll be. So it starts at about the 10 second mark and goes to about the 16 or 17 second mark. Real easy, you can do this back and forth. Same thing if you have a repeating video or audio, you can stretch out or shorten the audio track that way. So you can, so that's how you adjust how long it's in, and then you double click it. Holy cow, we can't read that. All right, now we can kind of see it. So you drag it to where you want, and then here you can see it. We can double click on it, and then I can select the entire thing. So right now, if it would cooperate, you can drag it around however you want. It's hard to see the outline since it's white. And then you can click this here to rotate it however you like. And then there are individual boxes for the text. So that's for the first line, second line, third line. And then there's this bottom little intro line down here. And so you can, and then you can also move these to wherever you want. So you don't have to keep them in that spot. It's very customizable. You can uh, change their orientation and their dimensions as well. You can put an outline around them. And the outline's currently black. So this is the text color, and then this is the outline color. So we could do something else while we, yeah, there you go. Yellow surrounding the red. Then here are different ways. This is how you would select the orientation, whether you want it left indent, right indent, center, bold, italic, underline. You can select different um, fonts. Here's a color dropper can save this as a custom title. So like some of the stuff, uh, my outro that I was using for a long time where it just had my basic information, I would save that as a custom title so I wouldn't have to make it again and again. And then over here, you can increase the duration. And so what I do with this one that I like is I slow it down. So instead of everything coming out and popping and bouncing real quick, it's slower. Let's see how terrible this looks. That kind of gives you an outline. I slowed it down, and then let's say I sped it up here, how that affects it. See, it's already in position, not moving, not bouncing or anything. Just done real quick. 
go ahead and delete that. Another cool thing are transitions. I do these every now and then. Um, in fact, I do do them on the Note Nugget video to transition between the gold nuggets dropping in the water to the actual video. So, yeah, the, I'm sorry, this is actually the wrong intro. Need to delete that. We almost made a horrible mistake. All right, note nugget intro. Yeah, I can't remember where I put it at. So this is what I do sometimes if I can't uh, remember is, so you see all the, the audio here. So this is where the single frame thing actually comes in handy. So I'm gonna fast forward one frame at a time All right, so I want to stop it there. I'm no longer in the video, so now I can cut it here. I actually messed up since I didn't select it. All right. Cut it here. Delete this previous video. I can now take this all the way to the front, and I have my Note Nugget intro. Let me see. I think I'm going to add in a little bit of fade in, two seconds of fade out. So we really didn't get that transition in because it was a previous deal that I cut. So what we do to get that ripple effect in is we're going to go over here. So this is our transition button. Let's see if I've got a favorite. Nope. There we go. And so you, what you do is you just drag it down to in between the two frames. This part is pretty intuitive and easy because it automatically snaps to where you have a cut. Whereas other times, like when I'm trying to get in here and select and cut out some stuff, you gotta be pretty precise. That's why zooming in when you're doing that will help. So now we can watch this and see what happened for us. So now we've got that transition. Um, I don't use them a lot. They're kind of fun to play with every now and then. But at the end of the day, um, for the type of videos I'm doing, it, it is fun to mess with them, but that's that's generally not what the viewers want. They're not looking to have some super artsy uh, video. You guys are coming for the information. So that's just something to, if you're having fun doing it and it's basically being a hobby too, then great. But if it's, uh, if it's not, you don't wanna be wasting a bunch of time editing because I promise you making long videos and stuff, you will spend a bunch of time editing anyways. Let's see, is there anything else I need to cover? Here are stickers, you drag and drop them wherever you like. I've got some different ones, so you just drag that uh, out here, and then I'll put it where you want it, and then you can adjust it, you can do the orientation. So I did a Joker Broker video a couple months ago, and so I put stickers to cover up the guy's information, so I could put that here if you guys were tired of seeing my face. And uh, very easy, you can delete it. And again, you can increase the, uh, the duration or shorten it as you like. Why don't we cover music and then we'll call it a day on this video. So you go to add files, there's sounds, which I hardly do. I, I've never even, I don't think I've ever messed with the sounds, but I do use the music and um, you, you can download it. And I got, I bought another packet or two that had some music and some backgrounds and stickers and th transitions and things like that. It was pretty cheap, um, but you don't have to. You can also upload your own and use those files. So we'll do this one here. So you drag it down here and actually we'll move it over here so we're not hearing the music from the intro. So now you can hear that, hopefully. I use this one quite a bit. And so the way you can adjust it is, let's say you just wanted that for an intro for or just for this segment here. So what you do is you go to the end, you click here and you drag it back to where you want it to end. So we want it to end here. It generally does a fairly decent job of snapping to a new segment or the end of a segment, but uh, it's not, it doesn't have to because it, it it wants you to have the ability to put it wherever you need it. But it does a pretty good job of that. And then you can just, like we were doing earlier, you can double click that. So like, let's say I wanted to have some background music for whatever reason while I'm doing this segment, you'd really want to decrease the volume. So you can do that over here and it usually does it 10% of the time, or you can be really 
smooth and just type in whatever percent you think will be good here. So now we can listen to that. It's still kind of loud and, and goes over my voice. So the other thing I could do here is I could increase the volume of my voice. All right, let's give that a try. Still a little loud for background music, but hopefully you're getting the idea. You could also uh, decrease the speed. And so that makes it uh, a little bit longer. And that dramatically changed the sound. And then there's the fade in and everything else you like. We'll go ahead and remove that though. And we'll go back to here. You know what? I think I'm actually going to increase the volume since I was a little soft this video. So we'll, we'll increase it to, we'll do 130 on all of them. I don't need to increase that because that's just the outro. All right, so let's save this project. What, yes, yeah, no nugget episode five. And I also generally like to, I at least put that in there and I like to also put the date that I made the video. And so when you're done and you've got it all set up the way you like, what you do is you export it. And then you can select the different file types and everything else, the quality. I usually do good because it's fine. Uh, I record at 1080p and uh, it puts it out at 1080p. I mean, that's the resolution and it tells you the duration and everything else. And so when you're done, you just click start and it'll take a few minutes to do it. Um, you can potentially share it as you're exporting it. I've never had it work very well for me. So I just, I make the video, I export it, then I go upload it to wherever else I need it. But um, I think that's it for this week. If you have any questions, uh, don't hesitate to reach out to me and I'll probably do some uh, other videos on Movavi in the future and uh, OBS with some more advanced techniques. But anyways, thanks for your time.